Hello, my sweet friends, it's Mrs. Gomez. And today we're going to be continuing our read aloud of Magic Treehouse Merlin Missions, Eve of the Emperor Penguin by Mary Pope Osborne. Chapter four, Happy Campers. Touching down onto a flat snowy field was an orange and white helicopter. The helicopter had skis on the bottom so it could land on the ice and snow. The bus came to a stop at the edge of the field. We must be going to the volcano in a helicopter, said Annie. By air, just like the rhyme says, said Jack. Great! Jack had always wanted to fly in a helicopter. Nancy stood up. For those of you getting off the bus now, please remember, the helicopter blades are extremely dangerous. Always wait for a signal from the pilot before approaching the chopper. Everyone watched as the spinning blades slowly came to a stop. The pilot waved from the helicopter window. Okay, Pete says we can go, said Nancy. Jack put their rhyme back into his pocket. He pulled on his backpack. Then, carrying his notebook and pencil, he filed down the aisle after Annie and the others who would join them in the helicopter. They all scrambled off the bus into the dazzling sunlight. Jump aboard, said Nancy. Jack and Annie followed the four other adults up the steps of the helicopter and squeezed into a small cabin. Sitting in two rows of seats behind the pilot, everyone buckled their seatbelts. Nancy pulled the door shut and turned the latch. Then she sat next to Pete and put on a set of headphones. Headphones on, everyone. They're under your seats, she said. They'll protect your ears from the chopper noise and also serve as a radio so I can talk to you. Everyone reached under their seats and took out their headphones. Jack and Annie pulled off their hoods. Without taking off their goggles or face masks, they placed the headphones over their ears. The thick pads muffled the sounds around them. Jack heard Nancy's voice over his headphones. Testing, one, two, three, can everyone hear me? Everyone nodded. Okay, Pete, take us to Mount Erebus. Pete, the pilot, started the helicopter. Even with his headphones on, Jack heard the roaring of the engine and the spinning of the blades. He held his breath as the chopper trembled and lifted off the ice and snow. The helicopter shook and tilted, then it buzzed forward through the blue sky. Annie aimed her camera out the window and took pictures. The Korean photographer did the same, and the Australian journalist scribbled in his notebook. Jack was too excited to take notes now. This is great, he thought. All the words in the rhyme are coming true. As they flew toward the burning mountain of ice and snow, he tried to remember what words came next. He slipped the rhyme out of his pocket and read, You must go to a burning mountain of ice and snow. On wheels, by air, then all fall down. All fall down? Wait a minute. What does that mean, thought Jack? Does that mean the chopper falls down? Do we fall out of the chopper? As these thoughts swirled through Jack's mind, Annie turned and gave him a thumbs up. Jack didn't want to scare her, so he nodded and shoved the rhyme back in his pocket. He watched anxiously out the window as the chopper approached a bright orange-red circle on top of Mount Erebus. Below is one of the world's most famous lava lakes, said Nancy over the headphones. The chopper hovered motionless above the crater of the volcano. The lava lake bubbled and boiled. That burning lava is miles deep, said Nancy. Its temperature is over 1,700 degrees Fahrenheit. Can you guys on this side see okay, Pete? Pete tilted the helicopter to one side and then the other. 
Everyone but Jack oohed and awed. Kim Lee and Annie took pictures. Go, thought Jack, before we all fall down. Okay, Pete, that's great, said Nancy. Let's land at the lower field camp now. The helicopter tilted upright and began moving down the side of the volcanic mountain. Jack saw a small orange building sticking up from the snow. Colorful snowmobiles were parked near it. Moments later, the chopper touched down onto the slope. It rocked and shuddered and then came to a stop. Whew, thought Jack. They'd landed without falling from the sky into a burning lava lake. But then what could all fall down in the rhyme meet? Stay seated until the blades come to a complete stop, said Nancy. Everyone remained in their seats with their seatbelts and headphones on. As you know, we'll be driving our snowmobiles up to the summit, said Nancy. Driving the snowmobile can be very dangerous on these steep icy slopes. Please remember everything you learned in your snowmobile training yesterday. As the others nodded, Annie nodded too. Jack nudged her. They'd never had any training with snowmobiles. Another warning, said Nancy. I know you've also been training this week to prevent altitude sickness, but still it can be very dangerous. So please let me know if you feel any symptoms. Altitude sickness, Jack wondered. He pulled off his glove again and opened up his backpack. He took out the research book and looked up altitude sickness in the index. He turned to the right page and read. Altitude sickness, also known as mountain sickness, is caused by a lack of oxygen at great heights. Symptoms include headaches, dizziness, and shortness of breath. Climbers traveling up Mount Erebus train for days by climbing to gradually increasing heights. Oh no, thought Jack. The spinning of the helicopter blades had come to a stop. Okay, happy campers, said Nancy, all clear. Before we drive up to the top, we will gather in the hut. hut. Nancy opened the helicopter door. Everyone took off their headphones, undid their seatbelts, and followed her down the steps of the chopper. Jack was last as he struggled with putting the research book away, getting his glove back on, and then pulling his pack onto his back. What took you so long? Annie asked when he got out of the chopper. Jack just shook his head. Have a safe trip back to the station, Pete, called Nancy. See you later. Pete waved from the window and then the chopper blade started rotating again. The chopper lifted off the ground and thundered away. And that, my friends, is the end of our chapter. Thank you for joining me and I will see you.